The Galveston Beach Patrol handles about 7 million people a year on their busy shores. Because of that, they take on a lot of roles, but during disasters like Hurricane Harvey, they add one more unexpected title to their list. Fox 26 photojournalist Darlene Jenick Ferris has that story. Hey, is anyone in there? When I saw water coming in, I started taking stuff upstairs, and then I knew right away because I had looked out the window and the water was already up over the car. Tell me about the team that got to you. Initially, it was the um, the Beach Patrol for Galveston came out with their jet skis and a, a raft and picked us up and then um, took us to dry land. Some guys in those um, ski boats, they came and they got us out, took us to a bridge. We got that call on essentially the first day that the rains really came in. This was an area which we drive through all the time. These are our neighbors of the island. We, uh, these are the same people that come down to our beaches every day. We went out to I-45 about as far as we could drive until I-45 was flooded, backed up our units, and we were able to launch our jet skis and assist. We were able to assist over 170 people. A lot of these were people who didn't have any transportation out of their homes or apartments due to the high flooding. Everyone in Beach Patrol got into this career or this job because they like helping people out. And this was just a different version of doing that up in the mainland rather than on the beachfront. Galveston Island Beach Patrol is one of just a handful of um, lifeguard agencies around the country that are really closely tied to their city or county emergency uh, management. A normal day, a lifeguard like this lifeguard behind me just uh, helped remove a splinter, just treated a jellyfish sting. Yesterday we had two heat exhaustions at this very beach um, and we had a double rescue. The nice thing about our, our ocean lifeguards is they're so used to being really flexible out here because the beach just throws anything at you and so you know they're already good medical responders, they're good with people, they're good in the water, um, but they're also really adaptable and so when you throw them into a situation like a swift water rescue or um, a hurricane or something like that, they really have these skill sets that can be brought to bear quickly and so um, we have a great crew that works year round that can pretty much, you can they're almost like water squat, you can throw almost anything at them, at them and they can figure it out. It's like you know what's in this water for the yeah. most part, but there you're going into that storm water, you don't really know what's beneath it. I mean it's a different kind of uh, risk and different kind of danger, right? Yeah, so when we were up there, it was a very surreal experience as we were driving through the streets. We were going through neighborhoods where we had cars floating in driveways, cars underneath water. We saw water all the way up to rooftops on certain buildings. Our full-time staff all has gone through swift water training, and these are the situations what we go through it for. This is new lifeguarding. We're not just uh, anywhere sitting just in the tower and guarding you know, all these people at the beach, but we do a whole lot of other stuff uh, in addition to that. And even now where it's been a pretty calm summer and we haven't had too much, we know that there's always a chance that it can still develop. We're still in hurricane season. So we make sure just to stay on alert all our equipment's ready to go and all our staff is ready to go at any time. I couldn't work with a better crew and I and I, and I work with uh, groups all around the world and all around the country, you know, like with the United States Life Saving Association, International Life Saving Federation. I think we're, you know, probably the best pound for pound lifeguard service on the planet. They are the best in the business. We're lucky to have them. Yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. Last